You got to watch this video. Hello, everyone. This is Rob Golfie with Remax the Golfie team. Welcome to the Golfie Real Estate Show, a Hamilton edition with host Rick Zamprin. The weekend is here again, and we are talking real estate, housing, everything under the sun in this sector with Rob Golfie, sales representative, Remax's Scartman Realty, the Golfie team. Check them out on the World Wide Web, robgolfie.com. That's Rob, G O L F I.com. And you should also call the number one REMAX team in Canada, number two in the world. That's the Golfie team, 905-575-7700. If you want to sell your house or you're in the market to buy a home, whether it's in Hamilton, Burlington, Brantford, Niagara, or beyond, 905-575-7700. And if you're scrolling on social media, if it's on X or TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, even threads, you can follow the Golfie team. Give them a like on those social media platforms. Lots of things to discuss on the show today. We'll talk a little bit about inflation. Now, that could be impacting the market in the months to come. The Bank of Canada has a very interesting decision to make on the horizon. We'll talk about housing starts in this province, not nearly as close to hitting their numbers as many officials would like. Uh, we're also going to dive into the all-new Golfie Real Estate Show or Golfie Real Estate Magazine which is out in your mailboxes if you haven't checked it by now. But uh, to begin the day, as we usually do, what's happening in your real estate life this week, Rob? So, you know what? It's funny. Month, month, every month is different. And I think everybody knew that they're think uh, like in January, February, and March, and part of April, people go, okay, we know interest rates are going to come down later this year, but we're going to buy a house now and, and just go forward. But because we're getting closer to the June 5th, which everybody's anticipating – uh, a price adjustment, like a, a uh, an interest drop, interest rate drop. I think people are kind of just saying, well, we're this close. Let's just hold off a bit. And mm -hmm. um, so in the first 20 days, uh, like I'm just going to give the numbers of the Hamilton surrounding areas. There was 412 homes sold in the first 20 days uh, of May. Now, I did the first 20 days of last year. It was 506 homes. So last year, the first the the first five six months uh, of the year in 2023 was a lot better. So we're, it's it's down 18 percent year over year in unit sales. But I mean, we're up average sale price uh, this year and the Hamilton surrounding areas 833,000. Last year was 814. Not a big jump, but it's 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 healthy because we had too many jumps mm -hmm. in the previous. Uh, years, but uh, but if we go over April, it's pretty well on par. Like in April, the first twenty days, they sold for uh, the Hamilton surrounding areas was four hundred twenty-two homes sold. We're four hundred twelve. So I do feel that um, um, sales are kind of you know okay, nothing nothing uh, uh, great like we had years prior. But I do feel people are kind of thinking about that interest rate drop that's going to happen. And because we're so close to it, we're less, I guess we're less than two weeks away uh, from that announcement. Now, it, we can have a big shocker and they may not do anything and keep it, but uh, <laughs> but it, it's it's hard to tell. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like they've given this, this, us this anticipation that it's going to be done. So um, I, I think if it does get done, it's going to be a quarter point. That's it. Because they don't want to uh, yep. stigmatize and, 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 and throw the, the market uh, way off and then everybody starts going crazy again. So, yeah, th that's um, my feelings that's happening in the marketplace right now. Yeah, I've heard a couple of different scenarios with the Bank of Canada, what it's going to um, uh, do back on, on, on June the 5th, is that there's most of the economists out there think that it's going to be a quarter percent on June 5th. And it seems like the rest of the economy, this is about 40 some odd percent, think that July is going to be the month that the Bank of Canada does it, just to give it an extra month, just to see how the markets react. I'm, I'm picking June as well. I think the time is kind of right. I know Canadians are ready for it. I'm sure you realtors, everyone else is kind of just, you know, waiting on that starting line for the big sprint to happen, because I'm assuming that there's going to be a lot busier summer than we've had in the past couple summers because of this. I, I, I truly believe that. Yeah. Cause people are going to take advantage. There's a lot of people sitting on the fence, you know, waiting and, and I think they just will jump in and, and, and buy something and people are going to be looking and you're going to see more activity this summer than any other summer than usual. Mm -hmm. well, another thing too is, do you think like if the bank of Canada decides, all right, we're going to cut quarter point, 
going to happen in June. We know not a lot of people are building their own homes, but that's also going to impact the cost of everything from a developer standpoint to, you know, building a backyard pool, whatever the case is, those interest rates come into play. Are you expecting a, a, just a much more active market when it comes to building homes, developers, solidifying plans, people building fences or pools? I, I think that's what they're hoping for, especially in the uh, the building uh, for the builders, because they need those guys to come back, and they need they need to get more houses built. And and these interest rate drops that we're hoping for is really to to help the uh, the economy to help build more homes. And if we're not building homes, we're 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 in a big jam now. Like it, it's it, it, every month that goes by that these builders aren't building homes. Well, there there's. A lot of people out there that don't have a home they're living in on couches in people's homes they're living in basements and and uh they're they need homes built and people are waiting and there's not enough homes out there even though there's a lot for sale but there's they, we need more homes there's a lot of people sitting uh and living in hotels right now that the government's paying for that or we are as taxpayers are paying for and uh yeah. we and we know hotels they charge by the night they don't charge by the month and uh, they're getting r very wealthy uh, with the government uh, paying them for uh, holding uh, all these people in these hotels all across, especially in Ontario. And uh, like Niagara Falls has got them. Uh, I know Toronto's got uh, hotels filled with uh, 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 immigrants or refugee refugees, and uh, and they're just paying the bill and just and these people are just you know hanging out in the hotel like like it's yeah they're enjoying the hotel life actually. <laughs> the uh, as I mentioned earlier, the all-new Golfy Real Estate Magazine is out. Uh, Mr. Rob Golfy is on the cover. It is a very handsome photo of you, <laughs> and you, uh, it you. looks it looks good. like the magazine's really slick looking. It's not one of those. I don't know. I, I can't really compare it to anything because this looks really good. Yeah, no. So we decided to go with the magazine format. We felt that um, the one thing is we wanted to put more information into it then versus the uh the newsletter that we would put out there was the other newsletter was uh folded le uh, 11 17. so uh i i've been wanting to do this uh magazine that went to every home and we we're hitting uh the a, a population of about 1.2 million people uh with this magazine it's not cheap to put it out um it covers all of niagara all of hamilton and surrounding areas all of uh, brantford all of Burlington. So we cover uh, um, a whole like 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 four different markets, and what it does, what the, the great thing about it is, is the the exposure that I can get to our clients with um, their properties for sale. Now um, we know a lot of publications have closed up, uh, and just because nobody's advertising anymore. And uh, but I felt the magazine be something that people have worthy that would actually keep. Uh, on their countertops or in their um, coffee tables in their house or you know they would use it but, you know we put we put you know the market awareness in there the stats and stuff like that showcase the properties um, and, it, and it's a professional it's a professional looking magazine so I think people mm -hmm. you know may keep it around and and, and and I know people kept the newsletters because uh, they would look back and and see what uh, you know what what happened a year ago or or whatever so so it, uh, yeah, we're really excited that, uh, that that's the first issue that went out, and I, I hope that we can I hope that we can uh, uh, can continue doing that, and uh, yeah, no, it's 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 amazing. So um, it's uh, it's 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 exciting to see that, and I'm getting all mm -hmm. calls, I'm getting um, text messages at, with a picture of the magazine. People sending it to me, wow, Rob, I can't believe this. I, you know, you're sending this magazine <laughs> out. So so it's been it's been pretty good. Yeah, it looks fantastic. What would you say would be the goal of the magazine? Obviously, you want to get, you know, the Golfy brand out there. It's, it's all over the place, whether it's billboards or bus boards or radio commercials, TV commercials. You're, you're everywhere. But the goal of this magazine would be what? The goal of the magazine is actually to get uh, more calls coming in on our clients' homes. That's one goal. Uh, information uh, to the public about what the market's like. Um, and, uh, yeah, just, to, to, just to help, uh, you know, the consumer out there and, and we'll, we're, you know, just, just give them information about what's going on in, in, in the marketplace, you know, uh, we'll put down some tips and stuff like that as we, you know, 
evolve the magazine. I, w- I would really like to get the magazine up to 20 pages. Right now it's 16 pages. But if I can get it up to 20, then we can a- actually put more information in there that's geared for Southern Ontario, what's going on with real estate, and uh, that people can, uh, can really enjoy and read. But, um, yeah, and if there's anybody that has any ideas that maybe we should add something else in there that will help the magazine, I we will appreciate uh, any comments or emails from anybody that thinks that uh, we should add add uh, a different, more information of something else in there that that could help the consumer. Got a few more questions about the Golfy Real Estate Magazine, which is out now in your mailbox. If you haven't checked it already, it was probably there for a few days. I, I picked it up earlier this week, and I and I was thinking to myself, I probably could have got this sooner because I only check the mailbox like once a week. It's you know one of those community mailboxes. Yeah. But one of the uh, one of the things on the front page is. Is it the right time to sell? And most people are probably asking themselves that very question. What do you say? You know what? If you're selling and buying at the same time, it, it, it balances out whether the market's high or low. Um, I, I think that um, uh, I, I'll give you a perfect, uh, perfect scenario here. I know we, got, we have a minute left, um, and we mm-hmm. can continue this on the next uh, segment. But uh, there's a gentleman that has a house in, in the West End. And he's thinking about selling it. And I said to him, did you, and it's a student rental, great prop, he's taking care of it. And I said to him, did you sign new leases for this year? And he said, yes. So they, they're, they're signed till April of next year. And, uh, and I said, well, you know what? It might be tough because I says the, the, the building that you have, it's a residential, but it could be commercial. So somebody may want to use that also as commercial. Um, I go, the, the best time I said for you to put that house up for sale is, I put it up for 1st of February of 2025. You have uh, the le- uh, the leases will be uh, out, running out in April, and somebody can, uh, some family can buy the house for their kids to move into and their friends so they can rent it out. Or uh, a, a commercial guy will want to uh, buy it and, and use it maybe for like a, who knows, a dental office for the West End or, or whatever. Uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, issuing the new stats, uh, you know, providing articles in the magazine, there's a lot of other, you know, cool tidbits of info that people may not realize. And one of them being, you know, um, what is my home's value? Another key point on the front page and some interesting information inside. And I know you offer free home estimates or instant home estimates, free home evaluations. Are people interested in doing that? Absolutely. You'd be amazed when that magazine goes out, um, when people do the scan code and, and uh, they check out to see what their house is worth, it, uh, mm-hmm. it, it gives them a range. And, and I'll tell you something, a lot of the times, you know, depending on the condition of their home or, um, or where they're located, um, it, it actually is, it, it's usually within that range. Now, now there are houses that are beyond that, like they go be above the range. Uh, it just depends on, you know, what they have into their house, but, but it, it is pretty close. And we, th- now that, uh, site that w- that's been put together to find out what range your property is worth is, is based on all the information that is in, in the immediate surrounding area of your house and with the, and, and the same information that has, you know, if you're a two story, four bedroom house, they, it, that, that algorithm picks up that information and tries to put it together and, uh, and give you a range of what your prices, your house price is worth. But again, it, you know, it's not, a, it's not a hundred percent accurate. Uh, you do need a realtor to go to your house and give you a, a, a general idea what a willing buyer is willing to pay. Now, um, now even a realtor may, may be wrong because a lot of times when, when you go into a house and you, you give them a number, now some realtors may be going too high and some go too low. And the one thing, the one thing you'll never, never go wrong is, is if, you, if, if the house is priced too low, you will get more action and you'll probably get multiple offers on it. But when you go too high on the price, that's where it can hurt you. And then you're, then you end up doing price reductions. And then now it, it, you have to wait for new buyers to come into the marketplace, you know, because uh, the, the other buyers have already seen it. They decided that it wasn't for them because of the price. Now, even though you reduce the price, they still feel uh, that, that, that same thing. So you have to be very careful overpricing a house and then chasing the market down, trying to, trying to, uh, get to the market uh, to where it should be at. But, and that's why we put the benchmark price there. If you look on the one page where the stats are, and I said to my uh, graphic coordinator, and I, and I said to him, uh, Mike, I said, Mike, make sure you put down that's the benchmark price average or uh, benchmark price that we're 
uh, of all markets where it's at. So, it, and, it, and that graph gives you an indication if we're up or down uh, from, uh, from uh, in the past 12 months or years. I know we have uh, some very religious listeners that tune in each and every Saturday to the Golfy Real Estate Show, Hamilton Edition on 900 CHML every Saturday, 9 to 10. And um, there's, there are some new listeners who come on board and say, hey, this is kind of a cool show. What's the Golfy team all about if they haven't known already or maybe they're new to town or maybe they have relatives that are new to town? Another interesting article is why choose the Golfy team? And we kind of don't really talk about that to, to great length on the show because I think it's you know self-explanatory, but for those who don't know about the Golfy team and being the number one REMAX team here in Canada, the first ever team in Hamilton to sell a thousand homes in a year, why choose the Golfy team? Make your pitch. You know, the one thing is we, we strive into customer service and, uh, and, and what we do is, is get your house exposed to basically the world. And there's a lot of things that we do that a lot of other uh, real estate uh, teams or even individual agents uh, don't do. Like, I mean, a photography service, I spend a lot of money on photography uh, with, uh, you know, photographing your house. And, and some agents just use their phones and, and or whatever they have a camera. But but our, our photography is, is important. And we have a staging consultant that will come to your house and, and look and see what, what, you, what you have. And then we also have a, a, the best, and, and I probably got the biggest support staff that helps me make sure that everything is taken care of when it comes to putting your house uh, on the market and selling and selling your house for top dollar in a short period of time. And um, th th like there's so many things behind the scenes that we do. Like, like we, we boost your, your uh, um, home online to see if we get more action, more views on it. And, and those things really make a difference. Um, we've had people buy houses that weren't looking at houses and they just happen to see it show up on their algorithm on their either Facebook, Instagram, and they look at it and they say, hey, you know what? This looks like a nice house. They come and look at it and and you know and sometimes they'll buy it and they weren't even looking for a house so that buy that marketing helped us help that seller get that home sold now if m m most people just put it on mls and just wait for the traditional way of people looking but when you can get uh your house on the market to, to somebody that wasn't looking at buying a house and be if something intrigued them about it that is no that uh, that's what I feel that we've really had great success in selling uh, a client's home when uh, when we do all those things that uh, behind the scenes and, and like we've got like we've got a whole like a booklet we do a presentation and everything that show you everything that we do and uh, um, you'd be amazed uh, of the things that uh, that we do a lot of times people call us because they want our our opinion they want our information but they end up going with the their brother or brother-in-law or sister sister-in-law or cousin or whatever that is a realtor that doesn't have that much experience but i'll tell you experience is important um it's not just price in the house it's not just you know going there put a sign on the front lawn there is a lot of things behind the scenes and a lot of knowledge that goes into working a deal together and when there's a tough deal being put together you definitely need w a, somebody on one end to be experienced to put that deal together because otherwise uh and that could be the only offer you get and and if you don't if you don't get it, uh, you, you may not get it again, and may not get it again at that price. So, you so experience is very important. So, please don't disregard experience when uh, when you're looking for a realtor out there. Yeah. So the answer to the question: Why choose the Golfy team? Uh, experience, integrity, unmatched uh, marketing system. Uh, in short, Golfy gets it sold. So case closed. There you go. Uh, let's uh, switch gears. <laughs> let's switch gears and talk about housing starts in Ontario because. We know, and you know, Premier Doug Ford has uh, discussed this at nauseum over the last number of months, the goal is to build 1.5 million homes by 2031. When we look at the most recent stats, however, it's not a good story. Housing starts in this province uh, last month fell 37% compared to April of 2023, including a 41% drop in multi-unit housing starts, which would be those 
condos and, and, and the like. Uh, not not a good start to the spring for for house builders. No, it, it, it isn't, and it's just because again, it's the interest rates, and uh, and that's what that's what's causing everything down uh, a slowdown. Once they get these interest rates down, uh, uh, at least maybe one and one and a half points down. And it will make a huge difference. You're going to see the housing starts happen again. Like the government has no choice. They have to do this uh, interest rate uh, drop. It, it, they, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. They're, and they would have done it earlier, but they can't. They didn't want to stir the market too crazy in the spring. But they will do it. Uh, and and uh, they have to do it because we need housing. And, and if they don't get housing, we're going to have more, more people, you know, on the streets out there. So we, we got to get that taken care of right away. Yeah, and the other part of the this double-edged sword is that not only are we not building enough homes, but you know we're still have the doors open to the country to bring in more immigrants, which which is fine, but we don't have any place to put them. No, and I, and I get it. The, it. the The government wants these people here just because um, I, our our healthcare system, and because we have a lot of baby boomers that are probably retiring, and uh, we need more people paying into it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so the, and, you know, with the Canada pension and everything, so they need, they need that. Like, I, I understand they need these people because, uh, for the future, um, uh, that, you know, with the baby boomers that are all, uh, retiring now, but, um, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it, we're, we're stuck in a little bit of a dilemma here with this country and, uh, hopefully they, um, uh, they, they fix it soon. And, it, and I think the start is, is, is the interest rates. They got to do something about the interest rates. Yeah, well, hopefully June 5th is the start of uh, a nice easing of uh, the uh, Bank of Canada's key lending rate, and that'll, uh, of course, spur the banks to, to make their changes as well. Uh, escalating clause. What is an escalating clause? So an escalating clause is also no like it, it, it is a provision that can be included in an offer to purchase real estate, typically in a, comp, uh, a competitive markets, like multiple, multiple offers. It allows a buyer to automatically increase their offer by a predetermined amount over any competing offers up to a specified maximum price. So let's just say this. You uh, you have an offer. I'm representing you, Rick, and you're putting an offer in a house. Now, there's two other offers on this. Let's say the asking price of this house is 500000 You, Rick, uh, the, the other two people put their offers in, but you're putting an offer in, and let's say you're going to put an offer in for 520000 on that uh, uh, offer, you put you indicate that you're putting an escalating clause, saying that uh, if your offer isn't the highest offer, you're willing to go five thousand dollars above the next best offer, the next highest offer, and uh, to a maximum price amount. Mm. It's not a good way to do business. And I know, I know, and, and, and this could actually backfire you if you have an agent representing you to put this in. It's so, like, okay. like, I think more competing agents uh, or more, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, veteran agents, more experienced agents, um, they, it, it can go either way. They may not like this, and, they, and they'll say, hey, if you're willing to pay this maximum amount, even though uh, there's no other... Uh, the other offer is way lower, like like the same price. That tells me you're willing to pay that high price. I'm going to say to you, if you want this deal, if you want this deal, you're going to pay that. You, I, I'll give it to you right now. You're going to have to sign off on it. Uh, that mm -hmm. maximum amount that you put on there, even though it's not, even though maybe it might be fifteen thousand dollars higher than the next best offer. They, so that, you know, you you kind of you got to be careful with with when you put an escalating clause in uh, in an offer. So, and I knew it happened to somebody, and it backfired on them. They were all excited. They were a young young guy, and he goes, "Rob, this is going to be the best thing. This is like you know." The guy was so excited. I said, "Be careful." I said, "You can lose that deal, and you got to be very careful how to work that deal, and and you got to work it very closely." Well, they did put the clause in, and they did not get the deal. And uh, so, again, you got to be careful on that. Um, I know um, it, it's not, it's not, it's not a. It just depends. There's a time and a place for it, and as an experienced agent knows when the time and the place to put that clause in, and 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 also the agent that's representing the seller. 
So you just got to be careful on how you deal with that. And the escalating clause, I think we saw some, some of that came out in uh, 2017 because of the, there was a lot of competition in 2016 and 17 with, uh, with multiple offers and people, you know, started coming out with that, but I haven't seen that in the, in the, in the past five years. And, um, and I think it's a risky thing for anybody to use. It's, you just got to, you just got to know exactly when and where to use it. And, and so that'll, it could be successful for you. Uh, are people still using these and is there a specific scenario where it's more popular than others? It's more popular in Toronto. That's where it started from. And, you know, and, uh, and then it just kind of filtered its way through the, uh, Hamilton, Halton, Niagara region. Um, it, you just, you just gotta, yeah, you just gotta be careful. And like in Toronto, there's always, they always come up with these, uh, different, um, uh, tactics in, in, in people trying to get, uh, uh, homes. And, and, and I remember when, uh, especially in Niagara, I mean, in, in Welland, when in 2017, they were getting multiple offers. They didn't even know how to deal with it. They never experienced that before. They were calling, <laughs> they were calling me say, Rob, how do you deal with this? And, you know, we had to coach them how to, how to deal with multiple offers and, uh, and how to choose one and, and how to, you know, how to do the representation. Like when, when a wave of multiple offers come at you and never dealt with it before, it, it's a pretty, it's a pretty stressful and, and, and scary thing to deal with, but it's also exciting for the, for the client that's selling their house. Cause they go, Oh, wow, we got three, four people interested in our house, but you just got to make sure you know how to, how to handle that situation and manage it good. So that, um, the, the offer that you pick, uh, doesn't fall apart and, 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 uh, and your client's happy with the price that they, they get for it. So you got, you got to be very careful. I've, I've been in situations where the highest offer we were scared, be, uh, years ago, cause we thought, Hey, the banks are never going to approve this. We, and we get this guy, we, we take this offer and then we lose this guy. Uh, and then the next best offer guy, we go to him, he's going to say, well, Hey, you didn't get that deal. I'm not coming in with the same price. I'm going to come in lower. So you got to be careful. Mm -hmm. A good way to do it is accepting two offers at the offer presentation. And we could talk a little bit more about that. I know we're going to break. So instead of going with an escalating clause, if you're selling your home, um, accept two offers at the same time. So how does this work? Yeah, so you, you take two offers because what, what happens, like, especially if there's conditions on it. So a lot of times I'll accept two offers. The first offer is the highest offer. So you accept it and they, they may have maybe a three-day condition for financing. So you accept that. The second offer maybe may not be as good, but it's just a few thousand or 10,000 less depending on price uh, than the first best offer. And you accept that offer based on say, hey, we're taking your, we're going to accept your offer, but the only way you're going to get this if the first guy uh, doesn't firm up on the deal. And uh, so we're saying, you know, we accept your offer based on that and, and then being released from a prior agreement of purchase and sale. So you don't want to sell two houses. No, sorry, one house to two different people. Then you got some major lawsuits. <laughs> so you put a stip Yeah, exactly. So you put a stipulation in there, uh, a clause in there to protect um, the, the seller and, and also protect the agent to make sure he doesn't mess up. But you also, mm -hmm. you're able to go to the second offer if the first offer for some reason falls apart. And, and that, that's a good way to do it. Uh, the, and, and sometimes you can push the second offer up, say, Hey, listen, we're going with the first offer, but if that guy doesn't come through, we'll take your offer. But, and, and then, you, you know, you put that uh, a clause in there to protect uh, everybody, which is a great way to do because sometimes, you know, uh, people may have buyer's remorse when they are in competition and say, Oh, did I pay too much? Uh, what did I do? You know? And, uh, so then that first offer falls apart and then the second offer kicks in and then, and you're, and you still sold, which is, which is a good way to do it. Uh, with today's financial climate, is it more common for people to not get the financing that they need? You know what? It, it, it is more so now. Now, I can't believe how many deals actually did go through during the, the height in 2000, uh, sorry, 2020, uh, 20. Two, 21, sorry, 2021 and also the beginning of 2022. Housing, mm -hmm. like people were putting 100, 150,000 over asking on houses. I couldn't believe they still, the bank still went through. But you know who got caught it during that time? So in 2022, uh, uh, if you bought, let's say March of 2022, 
like we're talking it's almost like so high the market just like just top of the mountain and then you mm -hmm. closed in the summer of 2022 so let's say your closing date was august and the banks would have done the appraisal based on what sold in august not what sold in march so sometimes some of those people couldn't get the financing because the bank said sorry you know so that's so when you're in a fast market get your financing get your appraisal done at the same two-week period that you bought that house in if you get the um bank appraisal the banks do the bank appraisal like four months five months after you bought that house may not be worth what you paid for and then you're stuck in a jam now you could be sued and chances are you will be, you're gonna lose your deposit, and then your dream of buying a, a new house or any house is going down the tubes because of uh, because of the economy, the way it went. And you gotta be very careful that way. Wow. Let's get to photos. How important are good photos when putting your home up for sale? Photos is very important. And it's also in, in a positive way, and also you gotta be careful in a negative way. Now. A lot of, again, people, like a lot of realtors, they don't hire professional photographers because they're trying to save money. You don't want those people. You know what I mean? Because they're not doing you a favor. You're paying a lot of money to sell your house. Get the right agent. As soon as an agent's walking through your house taking pictures with his home, like his cell phone, fire him right on the spot. Get rid of him and because he's not <laughs> doing you justice. You need to get a professional photographer uh, uh, in that house and photograph the house well. Now, some we do. We also do, you know, videos. We also do uh, virtual tours. Now, some houses um, are not that uh, attractive inside. There's a lot of clutter and everything. I actually will tell the client, listen, I don't think this is a, the right house to do uh, video or even do a virtual tour just because it's going to reveal too much information, too much of the, of the house, and, 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 and it's, and it's going to make the house look more ugly. People will know your house is cluttered. People will know. So let's go with the photographs. Now, if you got a gorgeous new house, it's got, you know, it's f fairly new, you don't have no clutter. Yes. Let's do the virtual tour. Let's do the video. Uh, but you got to be careful and selective on every house is different and how you want to uh, show it and, 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 and get it out on the market. You can't like, but photographs are important. Not, and sometimes not too many photographs. I don't need to see, like if it's a beautiful luxury bathroom, yes, it's beautiful. You can see those photographs are good. But if you just got a normal bathroom on a 1,200 square foot bungalow and it's got a, a green toilet and green tub, uh, I think I would leave that out. You know what I mean? I don't. Yeah. Need, I don't need to take. Yeah, I don't need to take a picture of a of a a basement with all the boxes and it's a messy basement. I don't need that. You know what? The key people want to see the you know the bedrooms, the living room, the dining room, the kitchen, uh, the main components of the house where people are living, and uh, mm -hmm. and then you know what? You could see if the house is going to be dated or not. You know what I mean? But if it's priced right, people will buy it. So it's very very important. All right, would you buy a house knowing that someone was murdered in it? Apparently, uh, if this happens, the value of the home could decline by up to 25%. Rob, is this true? Yes, uh, it, it, and it, you know, and sometimes it, it, even more. Uh, you, it just depends on the murder. I know it's, it's sad to say. So, for sure. instance, um, look, look what happened to the Sherman family in Toronto. Uh, right. They, yeah. they were murdered. And it's kind of an ugly unsolved uh, case right now, and uh, it it's 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 a pretty ugly event. So mm -hmm. basically, the family tore the house down. They they ripped it out. They're putting the the property up for sale. So somebody is going to go there and build a house. So there's so th so they're going to lose millions of dollars uh, just because they tore the house down. But they're going to lose millions anyway because it's going to be hard yeah. to find somebody to buy it. Now it okay. So that's that. So then you got the other the other part. Um, that uh, let's say uh, what is it Bernardo that you know tortured and, and killed people in there, De definitely I wouldn't want to live in a house like that. There's no way I you know even even them tearing down the property which they did and I think I'm not sure if there's another house built down there. I looked at it and I I, I wasn't sure if it was a corner lot. It was in St. Catharines in uh, in Port Dalhousie area. Um, I probably would not uh, not buy that. Now another part let, let's let's say if a, a mafia guy got murdered. 
It's kind of yeah. like I don't think that like, and it's sad to say. I don't know if it's as bad. It's not that as it's not that bad because it's because they're all criminals killing each other. You know what I mean? It's not like this. <laughs> it's not like you know what I mean. Yeah. That's what they're doing, right? It's like Different one set of circumstances. Yeah, yeah, the circumstance. One mob guy is killing another mob guy. That's that's how you know. That, that's the only way uh, it happens there. Um, suicide not as bad, uh, but if somebody was murdered, you have to disclose. Um, and if you know about it, and that's why it's always good to Google the address before you buy a house and even realtors should be Googling the address. Say, hey, let's find out the history about this house. Is there something going on on the street? Google the address, Google the street, find out what's going on on that street before you buy a house. It's very important, uh, to know that, uh, suicide. Um, I, I have bought a house where there was a suicide. The suicide was done in the garage. Um, I renovated it and, uh, and I, uh, you know, I, I, I sold it. I did disclose that to the, uh, the, the new buyers that listen, there was a suicide here. It was in the garage, uh, from my understanding and, uh, and they had no problem with it. So now these people that own it now, they've probably been there. I'm not sure how many years it's gotta be at least eight to 10 years. Um, th they're going to sell it. And I don't think they'll disclose that there's a suicide because it's kind of like they've lived there. They've made a home there. They've had kids there. Mm -hmm. It's it's they, they've made it their own. It doesn't mean it doesn't need to be disclosed. I don't think uh, it just it just depends on, you know, uh, on the buyer if because maybe buyers don't want to. They want to know that regardless uh, to me. It wouldn't bother me after somebody's lived there for 10 years and bought a house that somebody yeah. committed suicide. When it comes to a murder, though, uh, you know, someone has bought a home where a murder took place and they've lived there for 10, 20, whatever, how many years, do they have to disclose it when they resell it? You know what? It like it, it's hard to tell. Like, I mean, like if somebody's lived there for a long time and there was a murder there, um, I you know what? the I think I think if it's still like lingering around, I think it's mm -hmm. it's good to disclose because the neighbors will go to that homeowner, the new homeowner, right. and, you know, they'll, you know, they'll go to him and say, Hey, wow, I'm glad, you know, we didn't know if anybody was going to buy this house that somebody was murdered 25 years ago. Um, I don't know, but I think, I think it should be disclosed, but like I said, Google the address all the time. And uh, so, you know, for sure, sometimes agents will sell houses. They didn't even know you got now you got a lot of realtors cross bordering, like basically you got Toronto agents selling houses here and, and they're coming here and they don't know the history of like the Hamilton Burlington area or Niagara. They don't know. They just put up a house for sale and that's it. And then uh, meanwhile, they're in the, meanwhile, they didn't know that there was a mass murder in this house. And, and they can get in trouble for that because that's their job to find out. And they they will they could get in trouble. And so, like I said, like realtors got to Google the address to, uh, just as much as the, the, the buyer looking at buying the house. I don't think I would have the stomach to, to buy a home, even if it was disclosed that uh, someone was murdered in. It would always kind of bug me uh, to, to, to know that answer. But hey, to each their own. Remember, if you want to sell your house or you're in the market to buy a house, call the number one REMAX team in Canada, the Golfy team, 905-575-7700, online at robgolfie.com. That's robgolfie.com.